welcome back once again, everybody. Today we're going to take a look at the Alpha 15 from Cravar. Now, Cravar is based in Indonesia, a country we here in the West don't often associate with quality leather goods. Yet I've been intrigued with Cravar's bags for a few years now, based on the product descriptions as well as the price point. But because I've never purchased a leather bag from Indonesia before, I was a bit concerned. The head of Kravar is a curious and perceptive man named Yoki. Yoki is a delight to work with if needed, but there's a very straightforward click and ship purchase procedure on their really well laid out and beautifully photographed website. So it's very easy to use. So let's see if my concerns have merit and see if I made a mistake as we take a deep dive into the Alpha 15 and let's see if the product description and price match the reality of holding the bag in your hands, okay? Okay, so the Alpha came very nicely packaged and I received it here in California quite quickly after it was shipped. It came with this very nice muslin dust bag that you can put the Alpha into when you um, don't have it in your rotation. Very nice little detail. Um, so let's get into the dimensions. First of all, the Alpha is a classic double buckle satchel design, but with a few added features that we'll discuss. Uh, the dimensions are, it is 15 and three quarter inches wide. It is 12 inches tall, and it's about four and a quarter inches deep. The gusset is expandable, so that uh, depth is gonna change depending on how much you have loaded into the bag. The Alpha weighs a tad over four pounds, and that includes the shoulder strap, okay? The Alpha is made with a very thick veg tanned leather. The body is this uh, eight to nine ounce leather. You can see how thick that is. Um, and the gusset is made using a more flexible five ounce leather, um, which is uh, needed when you need a little bit of flexibility because the body of the bag, there's virtually no flex in it, very little flex until the bag gets broken in, okay? So um, the color of this bag, Cravar calls espresso, and it's a very dark brown, low sheen, uh, just, it's a lovely color. It reminds me very much of the Filson Field Satchel or Filson's Leather Goods that come in what they call Sierra Brown. And this is um, a Filson wallet that is in Sierra Brown, so if you like um, Filson products, you carry their Sierra Brown leather goods and you don't want to spring for a used Filson field satchel at a thousand bucks or more, this would be a very good alternative in my opinion. Um, so it comes in other colors. It comes in this color that they call sand, which has a kind of an ochre um, color to it. It's got some pigments of uh, some lighter browns. It's very nice. I'd love to see the bag in this color. It also comes in this color they call Fox, which is a lighter brown. It's got maybe a little bit of red pigment to it, and it also comes in black, okay? So again, the Alpha is made using this pretty thick vegged hand leather. The thicker leather adds a bit of weight to the bag, uh, but the thicker leather means added durability, longer service, and it'll protect the precious contents of your bag a lot better. So, and it does have that, that veg tan leather squeak that leather fanciers love to hear. It's, it's like the bag has life to it. It's not just a dead, inanimate thing. Um, that's so nice, we love that. So if you own an expensive laptop, you want a nice thick leather satchel uh, to put it in. You don't want some flimsy bag that can't protect it from bumps and scratches. And the Alpha delivers on that. So the edges of this thick leather, as you can see, the edges are dressed, but they're not beveled and burnished. However, all those exposed edges will burnish themselves with use. There's a very soft burnished glow hiding inside this bag waiting to come out as you carry and use it. The stitching of the bag is a combination of machine stitching for the long runs, and then some hand stitching for the finishing details 
and reinforcements. The shoulder strap is very generous. It can expand from 40 inches to 54 inches. So a person pretty much of any stature can find a comfortable length for, for the shoulder strap. The strap is made using two pieces of leather that are stitched together with the flesh sides facing in on themselves. The good size shoulder pad is um, made with a very dense closed cell foam that's segmented so that it will conform to your shoulder very easily right out of the box, which is a really nice detail. You'll notice that the shoulder pad has this anatomical cutout design to it so that when you're carrying the bag crossbody, the cutout here gives room for the trapezius muscle on the side of your neck, making it a lot more comfortable to carry for long periods of time. The adjustment holes are these uh, teardrop ovoids, um, which make getting the buckle pin in and out um, a lot easier. Okay, so if you want to um, change from crossbody to shoulder carry, you can do that quite quickly. The buckles on the shoulder strap are all handmade from brass, and they have this lovely bronze patina to them. Okay. The shoulder strap attaches to the bag using the same method that Gefeller case makers of Idaho uses on their briefcases. So instead of having brass or stainless swivel snaps or lobster claws, the strap is buckled directly onto these brass square loops, which makes carrying the bag uh, quite a bit quieter as well. The components of the strap, um, you can see here the loops, the um, uh, these little um, keepers uh, are all secured using brass rivets. So there's no stitching holding that. The brass rivets are a lot stronger and it's going to last a lot longer, okay? Okay, let's look at the exterior features of the Alpha. On the top of the bag, you'll notice a very sturdy hand-stitched grab handle. That's very comfortable in the hand. And it's attached to the bag using the same method as the famous Filson Field Satchel. So it's a top carry. The square loops here on the top of the bag, um, that's where you attach your shoulder strap. And in my opinion, that's far better, far better design than having the shoulder strap attached to the side gusset. Because when you attach it here, the strap goes up and it wears away these edges of your flap after a while as you're using it. And that's not very nice. All of this is supported by an aluminum billet that runs the full length underneath the flap. So that's never going to pull out on you no matter how much you load the bag, no matter how heavy you get the bag. On the back of the bag, we have a very handy and useful full length magazine pocket. And it has a built in heavy duty luggage strap as well. So you don't need to buy an extra luggage strap. The double gusset is made using just one piece of leather. Okay, so um, it's just one piece of leather goes around the whole gusset instead of using smaller pieces stitched together. It's more expensive to do it that way, but um, you have to use a larger piece of the hide to do that. So you don't get to use the salvage pieces um, to put your gusset together, but you get a stronger gusset that way. The satchel is secured by means of these two thick straps that completely go around the body of the bag. And these are what we call floating straps, meaning they're not riveted or stitched onto the bag. Therefore, they're removable. So if you have a 30 inch waist, you could have a nice belt in an emergency or they make a great old fashioned book belt. Instead of buckles, the bag is secured using these button studs which are commonly referred to as Sam Brown studs, which make getting in and out of the bag easy and fast. Sam Brown, by the way, was an English army officer who lost one of his arms in a battle. He didn't invent the stud, but he used them on his famous Sam Brown belt, which he invented to help him to be able to remove his sword from the scabbard more easily by using just one hand. If you're a Downton Abbey fan, Lord Grantham, wears a Sam Brown belt as part of his officer's uniform. So let's take a look at the interior of the bag. We get into it by popping these Sam Brown studs like that. And we can open it up. 
And the first thing you're going to notice is this lining. It's in this kind of red Zinfandel color. This is a tightly woven marine grade material used mainly for outdoor purposes like uh, umbrellas, that kind of thing. It's very abrasion resistant. It's nearly waterproof. So it's a bit overkill when used as a lining in a bag, but in this bag, it's used to protect your electronics and other items. The whole interior of the bag is lined with this material. So there are no exposed rivets anywhere on the interior or metal bits. Um, and that's gonna protect your, um, the contents of your bag. Uh, the aluminum billet that we talked about earlier, that is um, holding the handle on and the shoulder strap. That is sandwiched under this piece of leather here to protect the edge of your laptop. And it presents a really nice clean design in my opinion. The divider is padded. This is the laptop sleeve here. And uh, it's wrapped to protect your expensive laptop or tablet. The two pockets on the front of the divider are large and they will swallow up an iPad mini or e-reader or other small items you carry with you. And the main uh, pocket is larger and will carry files, books, or folders. Okay. So in every bag, there are what we call points of failure or stress points. These are places in the bag where it's going to fail at some point during use. Uh, most commercial manufacturers, they pay little or no attention to these stress points because they usually fail after the warranty period, so who cares, right? Well, the designers, uh, the craftspeople at Cravar have eliminated each failure point by using either a brass rivet or overstitching or both to make sure you don't need to worry about the longevity of your bag, even with hard use. And you can see what they've done here. There's a brass rivet, then there's a triple overstitching, which is done by hand on each of these places on the gusset, uh, same as on this side as well. On the top of the bag, you have your brass rivets, you've got uh, your regular stitching, then you have these little overstitching points along the uh, stress points of the bag. And inside this strap and inside the handle, you have a very tightly woven webbing that reinforces the leather even more. This is veg tanned leather, so it's really not necessary. It's just a bit overkill, but that way uh, they make sure that the bag is going to last you for a long time. Your Cravar bag comes with a lifetime warranty, so they're protecting you as well as themselves by going the extra mile and utilizing these uh, protective techniques incorporated uh, right into their build. So to close the bag, when the veg tanned straps are new and a bit stiff, um, it's a bit easier um, to secure the button stud by um, actually bringing the stud just past the hole between the hole and this easement uh, slit and then um, pushing down, okay, like that. If you try to place the stud directly over the hole, um, you're gonna need to use a little bit more force, but if you go just past like that, it pops in quite easily. The longer you have the bag, the more these straps will soften and it'll be quite easy to pop open the, uh, the studs quite easily. You won't even need to think about it, okay? Um, okay, so, um, Wow, I, you know, I really didn't need to be concerned about getting a leather bag from Indonesia, and really neither do you. This is a really well-made satchel using very good materials, excellent craftsmanship. Um, I'm gonna attach the shoulder strap for you. The veg tan leather is, is very, very reminiscent of something you would get here in uh, the United States or in Europe and Italy. I was a bit concerned about that, but uh, really I, I did not have to be. Let's go ahead and attach this one. It does make the bag quieter when you don't have the jangling of your swivel snaps. There you go. Okay. So um, in my opinion, you really get more than you pay for 
when you buy this bag. I was quite surprised. Comes with a lifetime warranty that includes shipping both ways. So you can't go wrong with Cravar. It certainly passes my test of an affordable veg tan leather bag. I think it's simply a beautiful bag. Um, the price point is absolutely excellent. So all of those who've been asking me for a bag that is under the $500 price point, but it's veg tan, um, this is the bag for you. It's just a beautiful, beautiful bag, very reminiscent of the Filson leather field satchel, same color, same kind of design, but with some updated features that that bag doesn't have. So I thank you for watching everybody and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.